Hello YouTube, this is Matt Pullen, and we're going to try something a little different today. This is a quiz, and the purpose of this quiz is to test your understanding of the opposition in uh, chess endgames. And the opposition is where uh, you move your king an odd number of squares away from the opponent's king, and this will uh, help you make inroads into your opponent's position by forcing your opponent's king to move to one side. Or, if you're uh, the defender, it will prevent the opponent's king from moving uh, any further forward. So, uh, this quiz tests out your knowledge of multiple forms of the opposition. And here's how it works. Get a piece of paper, and whenever I say write your move, you will pause the video and write down the uh, square that Black should move his king to. And uh, if you get the answer right, give yourself five points. And unless I say otherwise, there is only one correct square for black to move the king to, and the other square will lose. So, all right, you are black, and you are defending in this position. White's passed pawn on h4 is a protected passed pawn, and it's moving downward. So you will use the opposition to keep white from moving his king in and supporting his passed pawn. So, write your move. Okay. The correct move is king e5, taking the distant opposition, placing three squares in between the kings. If you chose king c5, then uh, it's the uh, most usual form of the opposition, the direct opposition, placing only one square between the kings and controlling any of the white king's forward squares. But you need to stay inside the square formed by this passed pawn on h4, because after h5 it's clear that black's king will not be able to catch the pawn. So the square formed by the pawn, drawing a diagonal line from the pawn until the, uh, the end rank, d8, black must stay inside this square at all times, otherwise he will lose. So if you chose king to e4, you are uh, too aggressive, because now white will take the distant opposition with king a4, and now you're committed to this attack against the g3 pawn. But this is way too slow. Because now, uh, because black has a knight pawn, this endgame is clearly one for white. So, king e5 is the correct move with the distant opposition. Now, black, I mean, white plays king b5, write your move. King d5, taking the direct opposition, placing one square between the kings. Now white's king cannot move any further in. So, white will, uh, well, let's, see, let's say white plays h5 here. Now, black will uh, chase down the pawn, and he'll catch the pawn in time, so now white moves his king in. And now, by moving the king to e4, uh, black no longer can access any of the yellow squares, so say he moves his king to h5, now white wins a pawn with king to f4. But, if black is vigilant, he can still draw the game. So, write your move. Okay, if you chose king g6, then you do not understand the opposition, because king takes pawn, and now black has to move his king to either side. And uh, then the white king can move forward, controlling the squares in front of white's passed pawn. But, if you chose king h6, give yourself the full five points, because after king takes pawn, king g6, now black has the opposition. White cannot make any progress in this position. This is a book draw. So, instead of h5, uh, let's say white plays king a4, trying to trick black into giving up the opposition. So, write your move. King e4, taking the distant opposition, because king c4 would put the black king outside to the square. Now, king a3, this is a tricky one. Write your move. Okay, if you chose king e3, this takes the distant opposition, but the uh, passed pawn will queen. So, you cannot take the uh, direct opposition. You must choose something called the virtual opposition. The virtual opposition is taken by king e5. Now, what do I mean by the virtual opposition? Well, if you uh, cannot take the direct opposition, you know, either diagonally or uh, straight, then the next best thing is to take the virtual opposition. And in virtual opposition, the, uh, you move so that the rectangle formed by the kings has all the corners the same color. 
In this case, all the corners are dark squares. So black has taken the virtual opposition, and he'll be able to maintain the opposition no matter what white does with his king. So, white plays king a4. Write your move. The correct move is king to e4, distant opposition. If, instead, you chose the virtual opposition with king to e6, now white wins as follows. He plays king to b4, and he's headed for the key square, d4. And what do I mean by a key square? I mean a square where if white plays his king to this uh, d4 square, then no matter where black plays his king, black will lose. And uh, here we'll, we'll illustrate that. Uh, black takes the diagonal opposition, and uh, white is just going to move to this key square, and black can only maintain his diagonal opposition. So king e4, king f4, and now black defends the pawn, but after king f5 he gets outflanked, and black cannot hold on to his pawn any longer. So white wins easily, up two pawns. So yeah, that is uh, getting to the key square. You should work it out for yourself if you, uh, if you have some doubts, but anywhere that black plays his king after white gets the king to d4, it's a win for white. So, instead of king e6, we play king to e4. So this is distant opposition. Now king b3, write your move. Correct is king to d5, uh, taking the diagonal opposition. Give yourself five points for that move. If you chose king f5 with a virtual opposition, now white will play king to b4, and you cannot take the distant opposition because of the uh, pawn on g3 controlling the f4 square. So the virtual opposition must be taken with king f6, and now white goes to this d4 square. Because if black tries to prevent that with uh, king to e5, now he loses the opposition and the game. So king to d5 is correct with diagonal opposition. Now, king b4, write your move. Direct opposition. King a3, write your move. Virtual opposition. King a4, write your move. Distant opposition. I think you're getting the hang of this. King a5, write your move. King e5, maintaining the direct opposition. King to b6, write your move. King d6, direct opposition. King a7, write your move. King e7 with distant opposition. King b8, write your move. King d6. If you chose king d8, then that is good too. Give yourself the uh, full five points for either of those squares. Now, king c8, write your move. King e6 with diagonal opposition. King d8, write your move. King to, uh, if you play king f6 with diagonal opposition, now king d7 and white will get his king to the d4 square. So this loses. Instead, king d6 with direct opposition is worth 5 points. King e8, write your move. King e6, direct opposition. Now, if white were to play king f8, then black's king can just follow the white king and white cannot make any progress. So, king to uh, d8, let's try this for white. Now write your move. King d6. Now, king c8, write your move. King to e6 with diagonal opposition. If you chose king c6, it's because you forgot about the square of this pawn, that black must stay inside at all times. So uh, the correct move was king e6. Now, king c7. This is the final question. Write your move. King to e7 with direct opposition. If you chose king e5 with diagonal opposition, now, after king to d7, uh, white is going to try to get his king to either of these key squares, d4 or g7. Black cannot prevent both of these ideas. 
let's say black prevents the white king from getting to the d4 square, which we already saw wins. Now, white's king will reach g7, and now black's king cannot take opposition because of the g5 uh, square controlled by the pawn. So black will have to move aside, and now the passed pawn marches to victory. So, uh, what can we say? Uh, there were 20 questions. Uh, five points were for each one. If you got 100 points, then you understand many forms of the opposition, and you can be confident in your ability to uh, play pawn endings well. If you scored any less than 100, then uh, you could have lost a game, and you should practice these positions, uh, because you, know, you could take any time you wanted, but uh, in a real tournament situation, maybe you're low on your clock, you need to be able to score flawlessly in uh, real-life opposition quizzes. Well, thanks for uh, playing. I hope you scored well, and have a nice day.